This is the windward side of Oahu. No waves out there today, just uh, windy seas. But it's a gorgeous morning. There's the sun coming up on the horizon. 6.15 in April of 2017. So this is Sifu Slim. Here's the uh, surfboard. I was coming down for <laughs> some waves today, but there'll be no waves right now. Anything could happen tomorrow or the next day, but it doesn't look like we'll see any waves today. And uh, I'm out in nature, so this is how I'm rocking it today. There's the Kulo, Kulo Mountains. And uh, they bring in a lot of rain, which is why it's green here in Oahu. And I found a little shady spot in this group of trees. So, got a message for you this morning. And uh, it's about ego. How do you work with your ego? So I'm going to show you what I'm... Some of the stuff that I'm reading currently. So here's a book, So Sad to Fall, an account of war and battle based on General Tadamichi Kuribayashi, his letters from Iwo Jima. So when you read this, you realize that these Japanese fighters were professional. And what made them extra special was their devotion. And it was what the Westerners called, the Americans called, like an insane devotion. But that, this goes back to the Middle Ages and, and before. You know, how does your country survive domination? And how does it dominate? Well, it's willing to risk everything. And these, these men you read about in this book were willing to risk everything for their emperor, who was a god, a demigod, Hirohito who became emperor as a young person. His father died young and his grandfather was uh, emperor before him. So he took over young. And I saw this movie the other night. Um, drawing a blank, I can't read. You know, they have that thin print on the back of DVD. So I need my glasses to read this, but um, Jamie trying to think but you know who this guy is and he's playing General MacArthur and the Emperor and this is about what happened to Hirohito the Emperor of Japan after the surrender of Japan after Hiroshima and Nagasaki which were which occurred after the bombing of some 50 cities with fire bombs that were you know destroyed 40 to 70 percent destroyed over the course of a month or two by Curtis LeMay and the uh, U.S. Air Force just burned the Japanese cities which were made of wooden houses and paper thin wooden houses sometimes. They just burned to the ground. And then uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the atomic bombs. So here you read about the both sides, or you, you see in the DVDs, both sides. And it's all, you, you feel the presence of the ego. And we're not without egos. It, ego, super ego, ethos, pathos, logos. We human beings have egos. And I've done a talk before on the idea of becoming enlightened. And on the path of enlightenment, you try to minimize ego. Well, one way to do it is to come out here and you can hear the birds this morning. You can listen to the birds, you can be in nature and you realize that you're not that important. Nature goes on with you or without you. With or without you, oh. Yeah, nature goes on. So spend a lot of time in nature, commune, meditate, go for jogs, pick up trash, be kind to nature. So that, that will help you minimizing the ego. And I, I strongly recommend that as one approach. You can read. 
And, you know, people think that 2017 in the modern era, they've got all this new information that's so superior to the old information. Well, anyone knows that a classic book is a classic book. Most of the writers of 2017, the year in which I'm speaking, cannot produce what the people produced back in time, the classics of literature. It's a different era. Now, there are some tremendous writers, some tremendous artists, not diminishing their talent in any way. But the classics are the classics. And so let's go back to Dale Carnegie. So here's Dale Carnegie, who lived in the early part, mid part of the 20th century, and wrote some incredible books. And this one is How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Well, you realize that he's writing in a time, uh, depression era, pre-depression, post-depression, tough, tough times. He's in New York City, he's leading classes as a young man. He didn't want to work for minimum wage, which was probably a, less than a dollar in the 1920s, and less, less than a dollar an hour. And so he's, um, he's writing about how to succeed and how he succeeded. So it's, again, me over everybody else. I'm going to get the followers. I'm going to get the converts. They're going to come to my meetings, not the other person's meetings. So there's this competition ethic uh, born out of survival and being the leader of the pack, being the head of the tribe, you know, tribes and the more recent eras, we know that they often had, like in the Ogallala Sioux, they had a medicine man for healing, they had medicine man for directing the tribe, or they may have had a group of medicine people or elders who directed the tribe, but they often had the two medicine men. And you read about that in uh, Red Cloud's book, the book on Red Cloud, called The Heart of Everything That Is. So take a look at that book, it came out 2012, something like that, 2009. Tremendous book written by one person from the Jersey Shore. I'm not from the Jersey Shore, but I am from New Jersey. But anyway, uh, you read about these these wise people, and so there, they had egos. They were given better uh, catches when there were people tra hunting and trapping and gathering. You know, they'd bring the deer, the prized deer, to these medicine men. Red Cloud would as a young brave to buy favor so and to hopefully assume a position of an elder himself a chief in the Ogala, the tribe of the Ogallala Sioux so the ego's always been there and you hear about the survival of the fittest well we know that tribes would not have lasted and hunter gatherers would not have lasted if it was only about survival of the fittest it was survival of the cooperators. If you want to last, you cooperate and you use your skill and your energy at times when you can produce and you can uh, make the tribe thrive or survive. So those are some things to consider. Uh, also reading about survival as far as athletes. This is a book called Crooked, A History of Cheating in Sports written by Fran Zimnich. So you can read this book uh, and learn about the history of cheating in sports. It, you know, I read a book on the history of the Olympics a few months ago. There was cheating, you know, way back when in the day. It's just the way it goes. When there's competition, people want an advantage, whether it's fair or unfair advantage. And here you read all kinds of the history, you know, somebody jumping on the subway and, and getting to a, a part in the New York Marathon, Rosie Ruiz Alva, I think her name was, Cuban-American. I don't know what she's up to nowadays, but ingenuity, you know, taking a subway to the finish of the uh, New York Marathon. I'm working on German. Ya hablo español y hablo y je parle francais. So now I'm working on German at age 54. It's no piece of cake, let me tell you. You got to learn the vocabulary, the conjugations, how to put things together, the spelling. It's, it's a lot of work. But what are you going to do? You're going to flip channels? 
You're going to hang out uh, shooting pool or you're going to learn something. I, I choose to learn something. Next, we know so much about the body in the modern era that these videos that came out in the 90s, ah, oh, they're no good. No, they're terrific. They're terrific and they did work. And you can see people in the 90s did very well eating what they ate compared to now and uh, doing these aerobics videos back in the day. So pick up one. If you don't have a VCR, get it on a DVD or watch it on YouTube. These physical movement videos work. So don't discount things because they're old. So I'm here today and uh, don't have the waves as I said. So got to make do with what I have. So I'm going to go for a long run with some intermittent exercises along the way. And today's gonna be my hunter-gatherer. Once a week I do a hunter-gatherer, which is about three hours. So it might be a bike, workout, bike, or it might be a run, workout, run. I have to get back to where I started. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna do the run, workout, run, followed by a jump in the ocean, which will be tremendous. And you know, it's, it's right now it's about 75 degrees and breezy the breeze is very welcome without the breeze and the sun comes up it'll it would be 85 which is a little on the toasty side so i'm going to do that and i'm wishing you all the best keep your egos in check get out in nature read a good book check out the wisdom of old compare that to the wisdom of the modern era and be happy and be well and keep that ego under control. We know that thoughts are powerful. One way to change those thoughts is to change what comes out of your mouth, out of your pie hole, out of your claptrap. So consider what you're saying before you say it. Speak with less emotion unless it's positive emotion. When it's negative emotion, speak less consider those thoughts and get grounded. Come out here in nature, listen to the birds and make the best of things. And there you are. Reinforce that, empower yourself, empower others. Wishing you all the best. Author of Sedentary Nation, sedentarynation.com and The Aging Athlete, aging, theagingathlete.com. I welcome your feedback and I hope you pick up a book and you learn from some of these writings that I've put together from the heart and the mind and the spirit. Wishing you all the best. I'm Sifu Slim from Oahu. Now back to you, Jim.